Hey everyone, my name is Karina Anglada and I am a strategic development manager here at Adobe. I've been with Adobe for just about a year and a half now, um, but before joining Adobe, I worked for over 10 years in the sports production industry, working as a video editor and producer for several teams. And so I am so excited for this session today. Now, before we get started, I wanna briefly run through our agenda. We're gonna start with a brief overview, then we're gonna get right into our customer panel and workflow discussion featuring our awesome panelists. And then stay tuned, we've got our Frame.io, Camera to Cloud experts, my colleagues, Rob Laughlin and John Blackwood that are gonna give us an official Camera to Cloud demo. And then we'll wrap it up, we'll bring everybody back in the room for Q&A. And I think most of you are likely very familiar with Premiere Pro. And while we're gonna hear a lot of tips and tricks from our panelists, I want to level the group here. So we have some really, really exciting new features with Premiere Pro, one that I am so excited for currently in beta. If you have not checked it out already, you have to. It is text-based editing in Premiere. And this is a new way of editing in Premiere Pro. So instead of reviewing hours of source footage to find the sound bites you want, you can just review transcripts and search for keywords to find the right content later. It's amazing, you have to check it out. Text-based editing, just kiss. But we also know that a huge part of the creative process is collaboration. And that's where Frame.io comes into play. Frame.io, for those who aren't familiar, is your collaboration hub for video, images, comments, feedback, you name it. And if you've never worked with Frame.io, this is what a, a typical project might look like. So I've got my project files, cuts, graphics, footage. Here I've got a folder for review so I can see and view comments. I can scrub through and look through. It's amazing, and we'll get into it a little bit later, but the Frame.io panel is right integrated into Premiere Pro, and if we've got any motion designers on the call, it's in After Effects too. And we're gonna talk all about that and so much more, but that's enough of me talking. It is time to welcome today's incredible guests from across the pro sports industry. We've got Tom Frenette from the Golden State Warriors, Kara Spierto with the Atlanta Hawks, and Grant Gilkison, who worked with the Los Angeles Chargers and the San Antonio Spurs. Thank you all for joining us. We're gonna get right into it. And I see in the chat, we've got people tuning in from all over. I also see some folks that I recognize. So thank you for tuning in. I see Columbus, Ohio. I see the Buccaneers, hello from Tampa. We've got someone from Madrid, bienvenidos. This is amazing, amazing, amazing. Now, it looks like we've got some students in the chat too. So I want to hear about each of y'all's backgrounds and how you got started in the industry. So Tom, let's start with you. What is your background with video production and where are you working now and what is your role? How did you get started and how did you get to your journey where you are now? Sure. First off, thanks for having me, Karina. Um, my name is Tom Frenette. I'm the lead cinematographer for the Golden State Warriors. Um, I grew up in Connecticut, really close to ESPN, a huge sports fan. So that was kind of always my goal to work there one day. Um, you know, this this career path sort of took me elsewhere. I, I worked for the Miami Dolphins and now the Golden State Warriors, which um, I feel like is the perfect blessing in disguise. So uh, that's a little bit about my my path. Amazing. And Kara, where did you attend college and university and how did that set you up for success for where you are now? Yeah, so I went to UF, go Gators, if we have any Gators in uh, in the chat, um, but did telecommunications news there. We didn't really have a sports production track while I was there since I've left, we do. Um, so did more on-camera stuff, sports broadcasting, you know, fell in love with telling the stories of the athletes, the players, the teams. Um, and really wanted to start getting behind the camera and see how I can continue to tell those stories off camera. Um, so ended up, you know, applying for every and every job um, on Teamwork Online and started my career with the Falcons, started working with them, uh, worked with the Rams for a year as an intern, and now I am at the Hawks for, I've been here for two and a half years, and I'm a video editor and producer. So kind of a little short, short tidbit of how I got into where I'm at. Yeah, we're getting we're getting the Cliff's Notes version. We're gonna dive a little deeper because I feel like I'm getting the shortened versions of your careers. 
Um, but Grant, where did your journey begin and, and where have your editing and post-production skills kind of taken you career-wise? Yeah, I mean, for me, like, I started editing in high school, so I kind of always knew that, that was what I wanted to do. I uh, moved to the Bay Area in 2008 um, and went to film school there, and then I kind of fell into cinematography. So I kind of started to kind of find, find the bridge between editing and, and cinematography and had an interest in sports uh, entertainment. So I got my start uh, as a freelancer working with Draymond Green and Uninterrupted, uh, which was a unique opportunity, which led me to uh, full-time work with the Spurs as a creative video producer. That led me to the Chargers, where I was uh, back, or I was a documentary video, or documentary editor and producer for their uh, behind-the-scenes show, a backstage Chargers at the time. And then I kind of been freelancing since then, still uh, working with the Spurs in the freelance capacity now on their documentary show. And I'm actually about to start a new position with the Cincinnati Bengals. So, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Amazing, late breaking news. That is amazing. Congratulations. And Thank I love you. I love having you all in this in this room because um, lots of different experiences. And you know, it seems like working for a sports team, your video content ends up in so many places, right? Like you mentioned, um, documentary style, social media, going to games and seeing all the content on the video board. So for each of you, what kinds of content are you creating? And Carol, we'll start with you. Um, so I do a lot of the basketball side of things. I have been traveling with a team for the last two years. So a lot of the quick turn stuff that happens in game, a lot of the post game stuff, you know, um, just those short little edits. But my passion is also long form. So something that I started working on with the Hawks specifically is um, our all access and kind of taking that content and not just doing, you know, short tidbits on Instagram, but taking, you know, more of a lengthy video edit and putting it on YouTube so people can learn more about, for example, John Collins and AJ, our rookie this past season. Um, so, you know, just kind of starting to start that off with the Hawks, but it's been fun because so many people nowadays do go to YouTube. They want to know more about the players. They want to know who they are off the court, off the field. Um, so I've had a lot of fun with that recently. Um, and I would say that's kind of, those are, those are the main videos that I do kind of throughout the season. Awesome. And, and Tom, we've got someone in the chat that said, you must be a little busy right now. So thank you for showing up today. Um, and I echo, echo what Mark says, but what type of content is the, are the Golden State Warriors video team capturing on a, on a day-to-day -day basis? What does your day in the life kind of look like for you? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of similarities, not just between, you know, the three panelists here, but everyone, even in the chat, there's a ton of, you know, all access features that we do. Obviously, we all film game highlights. That's that's why we do this. It's the most exciting. Um, so we spend a lot of time with that. We also have at the Warriors, the, our Chase Center umbrella is all really one one piece. So we do a ton of content for events at Chase Center, events um, really promoting, you know, indoors, whether it's a concert, outdoors, whether it's some sort of community event. There's a ton of work like that. Um, and like like Kara, um, I travel with the team. We actually leave uh, for LA later today. I haven't packed yet, so that's a few hours away. So um, yeah, you know, all sorts of all access. I'm sure there's a ton of similarities um, between everyone in the chat and really the pro sports world as well. Amazing. And and Grant, you know, where does your work get published? You know, it seems like nowadays there's content everywhere. Kara, you mentioned YouTube earlier. There's a demand for, you know, the nine by 16 kind of content. So for Grant, where is your content typically getting published? Or does, does it vary based on the project? Yeah, it varies based on the project. Like the long form stuff definitely lives on. But from there, you know, you have, I mean, like, for, for example, the Spurs documentary stuff that's Main main uh, main place lives is YouTube, but uh, you, you know all sorts of cut downs, different um, dimensions as far as four by five and nine by sixteen things that you need to cut for specific platforms. So like IG Reels or Twitter, uh, TikTok these days, um, it's kind of all over the place. And you know even with the long form documentary editing, you know you got to pull you know thirty second social spots, fifteen second reels spots. Um, and be real flexible as far as like what your deliverables are. Um, even though if it's if, depending on if it's a 30 minute documentary piece, you got to be thinking social um, all the time. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a short little brief. Uh, I love that. 
I love that. And I know we're going to get into that a little bit later with uh, diving deep into Premiere Pro. But I'm curious for all of you, because you've had such uh, vast experiences, what has been your favorite project or video that you've ever been a part of or worked on? Um, And if you have it, what's been the most challenging project you've worked on? I feel like that's, uh, you know, editing is like, I always like to tell people it's like surgery in a sense, you know, you're, you're getting into the nitty gritty, finding the exact moments. Um, so Kara, we'll start with you. Um, I think I kind of have two that I like immediately will think about, um, you know, kind of being on the basketball side, seeing the basketball team, seeing the work that they put in. Um, uh, the coolest experience I've been a part of was just kind of when we won game seven in um, Philadelphia two years ago for like to send us into the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, just seeing the camaraderie within the locker room and how excited the team was and all the hard work they had put in, being able to see those moments and then take those moments, and I'll, I'll share it later with you guys, but and how we share it with the fans and let the fan base be able to like kind of see in the locker room and get to see these players that they've been watching all year, you know, how they perform, performed on the court and kind of getting to be that inside inside look for the fans. I love being able to do that. That's That was probably my favorite experience I've had so far on the basketball side. And then on the other side of it, um, the most challenging and my favorite project I've worked on um, was probably the John Collins All Access. He's just a great guy on and off the court. So getting to kind of share that with the fans as well and getting them to see who John Collins is when he's, you know, running through the hallways, dapping up security guards and whatnot. Um, And then just getting to storytell, really, that was that was a lot of fun. It was super challenging. Um, Like you said, it's like surgery, you know, the amount of versions that you have to go through to get to the end result is insane as all of us editors on here, I'm sure, can can relate to. Um, but it's so rewarding and so much fun and, and great to be able to like shed light on a great athlete, you know, on and off the court too. Tom, what about you? Um, favorite project? I was trying to think about that while while Kara was answering, but um, I don't know if I have a favorite project. I guess I could give like the Tom Brady response of like my favorite ring is the next one kind of thing. Like favorite big project is the next one. Um, so I'm gonna cop out and use that as my answer. But um, I would say most challenging was actually sort of the bubble year. Kara, were you guys, you guys made it to the bubble, right? Did not, we did so not. We were one of, I wasn't here yet. Yeah, so we were one of the other eight teams that didn't. So for everyone that didn't go to Orlando, each team held like a two week practice period where it was kind of a similar um, similar bubble thing, but it was just practices. So a lot of teams that uh, didn't quite qualify or, or chose not to go, however that went, um, had this two week practice period. And because of COVID, everybody, like there was no content for months, right? So we had to cram in so much um, in that two week time. We ended up miking up one of the players. None of us had ever done that. Um, the basketball jersey were coordinating with the NBA, trying to get rental equipment, all while being, um, you know, we had shelter in place for three days at a hotel, trying to coordinate that. We had interviews every day. Those were probably 16 hour days for two weeks straight. A lot of challenges and kind of maneuvering um, a lot of working parts, I guess, for for the business side of things. For sure. And and for those unfamiliar, the bubble that he's referencing was during the pandemic when teams, you know, um, the NBA had to go to Orlando and um, that was a crazy time, I think, for everyone across the industry. Grant, what about you? What's been your favorite project that you've ever worked on? Um, I think for me, like, it, well, it's, it's kind of a two for one. It's among my favorite, but probably the most difficult. And when I was with the Chargers, we uh, were doing backstage Chargers. And the second season was like a, like a 40 minute special for uh, the start of the second season of the, of the documentary show, uh, which is the 2019 season. But that was like planning all the way back to basically free agency the year before. So a lot of kind of scheduling player features and coach features and offseason stuff. And it's it was difficult in the sense that like you know, everybody wants to see the game highlights and the game recap. So we had to tell a 40 minute story without any games in it. Um, but in that. So that was kind of the difficult part and also coordinating with players and whatnot, too. But. My favorite part in that was uh, we got to fly out to North Carolina with Thomas Davis, who the Chargers had signed at the time, longtime Panthers linebacker. And that was like kind of one of the most intimate kind of shoots I've been a part of because he was sending his daughter off to prom. And like we got to kind of capture that. We got to have a really nice in-depth interview with him and his wife. 
and uh, he just like showed us his Jordan collection and whatnot. So it's like moments like that you kind of you know really humanizes the players because you see them as athletes, but when you kind of work with them, it's it's you realize that like they're just regular people, just like you and I. You know, they collect Jordans and they like you know have like to play golf or whatever. So um, in that sense. Um, it was it was great. It's probably one of my favorite shoots I've been a part of. It's probably one of my favorite episodes that I've got to be a part of. But again, just the logistics of trying to plan a 40 minute episode. Uh, one thing I will say is like we had a whole 15 minute ending sequence planned out and a certain somebody, I won't say who uh, dropped out at the last minute. So we had like a week before the episode had, had to air and then we just had to be quick on our feet. And that's just kind of one of the things that like I think you need to really kind of be on top of working in sports entertainment and expect to just be like adaptable. Um, but yeah, anyway, so. Yeah, no, that's, that's great a great advice. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think that applies to everyone, no matter where you work and not even just the sports industry, right? Like that's a great skill to have. Um, we've got a question from the, from the chat. Um, Rodolfo has asked for each of you, how big or small are your video crews for game day? So Tom, um, I feel like you will start since you're kind of in it <laughs> coming off a, a game yesterday. So how big is your, are your video crews for game day? Yeah. So, um, yesterday, I think we had probably five people shooting total. Three of us were, um, mostly on game action. One of us was on fan shots and then the final person was on press conferences pre and post game. That's kind of how we divvy it up um, last night for the game against the Lakers. We had uh, one videographer courtside, one in one of the uh, portals, as we call it, one of the VOMs, kind of a slash angle on stands. You'll see where the broadcast cameras typically are. Um, that third one was roaming. And actually, three and four, both the game action and fan shots were roaming. And uh, five was on press conferences. All for all that content, obviously, is for game recaps. We do mini movies. Um, long form YouTube content, TV shows all for that purpose. And then Grant, you had a great point earlier about, um, you know, your focus on shooting for long form, but you have to keep in mind social media. So it, it's just kind of the, uh, you know, the ebbs and flows of this and trying to, you know, please uh, every party possible. Kara, how big is or small is your team for game days? Um, it kind of depends. It changes from obviously on the road. You can't take all your videographers with you, unfortunately. Um, but at home on the big games, we'll have four people. So we'll have one person on the court shooting. Um, and then we'll have some, we'll have two people roaming. One will be focused more on fans and the other one will be more on gameplay. Um, and then the fourth person we normally use as like an editor. Um, that's what we did during the playoff run. We would just have them edit and then also help in whatever else, you know, post game, I would say is kind of when you need the most cameras because we're lucky at our arena, we have a lot of great shooters in the arena as well that we can use that have, you know, great slow-mo cameras as well. Um, so we'll be able to use angles of, of everything gameplay, but, you know, post-game, someone needs to follow Trey, someone needs to follow DeJounte, someone needs to be in the hallway, someone needs to be in the locker room. So that's when you kind of see all hands on deck is so helpful, um, especially at those home games. It's amazing. And I, it's interesting hearing that you guys discuss how many shooters because, and, and people working behind the scenes, because one of the trends we're seeing right now with all of this capturing of footage is a big shift of working in the cloud. And so for Tom and Kara, your teams have been utilizing Frame.io's camera to cloud for some time now. So for Tom, from a capture standpoint, how has your squad's workflow evolved over the past year or so? Yeah, quite a bit. Um, we first started using camera to cloud really in hopes to send out highlights to our social media team as fast as they can get it on, you know, the broadcast angles. But they've got a whole system to do that. So we started using it two years ago at Summer League. That was kind of our first demo. And, um, you know, all through last year we had, you'll, you'll see in the video in a little bit, um, two Teradek uh, Cube 655s that send proxy files to the cloud. So we had um, initially testing this, we had one videographer in Vegas while we were seeing the files come through uh, live in San Francisco. So um, it's definitely evolved. We're trying to throw in more things. We actually just started, we added a um, Atomos Shogun Connect for our press conferences. So we're able to cut those a lot faster, get those out quick. Um, but we primarily use it for highlights and uh, we've just sort of evolved in, in finding more ways to make it faster and bugging the hell out of our IT team when the Wi-Fi is slow. 
<laughs> I, I love that. Um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a day in a job if you're not bugging another department, right? Um, Kara, you know, I want your honest opinion. You know, how did your team feel when you first introduced camera to cloud? camera to cloud to the crew and you know what's the sentiment now that you've been in it and been able to use it to deliver content faster to your social team yeah I think um, like I kind of mentioned when you're on the road you're kind of the only video editor and shooter um, I used to have my laptop with me nearby to be able to quickly cut and edit we're no longer allowed to do that in the NBA which makes sense um, mm -hmm. So I think it was kind of exciting at first just to be like, okay, now we can get this stuff to our social team and they can have it as quickly as possible. Um, kind of like Tom was mentioning, figuring out, do we need a 5G hotspot? Do we need to connect to the Wi-Fi? That part was, you know, difficult. It, it would work every now and then. Um, but now that we've, you know, got the 5G set up, we know exactly how it works um, in most arenas. Um, it's exciting now. And I think our social team loves it too because, you know, I can be in – you know, in Golden State's arena and my editor is back here in Atlanta, the social team can see everything I'm, I'm shooting. So now that we've, you know, gotten more of a better grasp on it in this last year, I think it was really exciting and exciting to be able to use during the playoffs too. That's amazing. And for Tom, what's been the most unique location that the team has utilized camera to cloud? Uh, I would say there's two. Both of them were this year. Um, we started the season in Japan, actually. Actually, I'll, I'll take that back. We ended up sending files later, so we didn't use the camera to cloud for that. Um, but later in the year, this past January, we went to the White House um, after winning the championship last year. So mm -hmm. we basically did exactly what Kara was saying. We had a 5G hotspot with us just in my pocket, um, kind of burning through my pants because that was heating up. But um, <laughs> we just had an FX6 and kind of roaming the halls of the White House interviewing players, um, doing interviews afterwards. And we actually had two cameras there. We had one of our red Geminis um, on sticks where other videographer, Janet. Um, so she was shooting kind of the, the main platform shot. So we had that. And then, um, you know, myself and our producer Cassidy were just sort of roaming around kind of, you know, quick run and gun interviews. And we had an editor, I think cut, I think there was a full, like maybe three and a half minute edit the next morning. So he was getting, he was pulling all that stuff in, in San Francisco um, and getting like a quick, quick recap video out. That is amazing. And shout out to you. How cool. Talk about a unique location, the White House. Yeah, that'll, that'll make the top of the list, at least for me. Now, I realize I'm getting a little ahead of myself, you know, in talking to you guys about Camera to Cloud. So we're actually going to roll a video that Tom put together. He wasn't sure if he was going to be able to be a part of this. So he's kind of kind of kind of going to not kind of he's going to explain his general workflow and how the Warriors utilize camera cloud. So let's roll that video. Hi, everyone. My name is Tom Fernet. I'm the lead cinematographer of the Golden State Warriors. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make the presentation on May 5th. So I wanted to pre-record a video explaining our workflow. So here you see this is our camera setup. This is sort of our game action setup that we have here. Um, you can see we have a Red Gemini DSMC2 model. We shoot with the Canon 25 to 250 lens, and we send our files, our game action files, to the cloud, courtesy of this Teradek Cube 655. So this monstrosity is an on-the-shoulder setup that we use uh, to quickly send high-quality slow-motion files from our camera directly to the cloud. And what's most important about this is the proxy files that this creates are usable working files. I know when Camera to Cloud first came out, everyone was like, okay, how is that possible? And even still sending raw files over you know, Wi-Fi or any sort of network is, is pretty um, strenuous on a network capability. So this device right here helps make all that possible. This creates um, MP4 files just via the SDI output of your camera, and it fires when you record on your camera. So I wanna break down the workflow a little bit here. When we have our camera set up and ready to go and we're, it's during a game, we can just hit record on camera right here, and then via the SDI output of the camera and the SDI input on the Teradek Cube 655, the encoder itself is also recording a smaller proxy file. So that's saving to the SD card right here. 
So while we're recording 16-bit RAW with the, the red um, mini mag here, this is only recording a six megabit per second MP4 file. So the file size on here is much, much smaller and much more digestible than you would have here, especially on a cloud workflow. So let's cut that. So everyone always asks our video team, how do you guys send these high quality files from your red cameras directly to the cloud? And the encoder here that I just mentioned is a really, really cool tool. It will record those small MP4 files to the cloud. And then as soon as the file closes, it stops recording, it'll start uploading wherever you want it in your Frame.io workflow. When our video files finish uploading, our editors can pull and drag directly into Premiere via the Review for Frame.io app. Now, I want to dive a little bit deeper into this setup. So like I mentioned earlier, the camera's SDI output then goes to the encoder. But one thing to note is that the camera's SDI output will be limited to the base frame rate. So the camera right now is in a 2398 base frame rate workflow, but we're recording at 120 frames per second. So the SDI output will be sending 2398. So everything that you see from these proxy files will be in regular time. But there is a workaround. When we first started talking with Frame.io about this camera to cloud, that was a really big question for us, was how do we send these slow motion files to our digital team? That's really what people want to see. So we came up with a solution to put the camera into playback and then manually trigger via the record button here on the Teradek. So what I'm going to do now is showcase that. So we're going into our camera's playback mode, and we're going to select the correct clip. This one is clip number 52, and this is a clip from last night's game of Stephen Curry hitting a three-pointer. So I'm going to scrub to the right time where I want the clip to start, maybe around right here, and then I'm going to go back down to the encoder to manually trigger it via this red record button. So I'm going to hit play here, and then I'm going to go back down to the encoder and hit start recording. So now you can see we've got the ball going through the air at 120 frames per second. And then when you're done, you go back down to the encoder here and hit stop. That'll create a separate file that will also upload to the cloud just with a different naming convention. So the best time that I've found to send back these slow motion files is during a timeout or when game action isn't happening, maybe a free throw. It's also a good time to make sure your files have uploaded. And the best way to do that I found is through the mobile app. So here we can see a bunch of clips that we had from last night's game. And it, we can see if the files are done uploading and also use it to communicate with our editors. So let's say we like this clip here. We've got about a minute long clip here that we can check. Here's another Steph Curry three pointer. So we can then communicate, add a comment to whoever our editor is and say, check this one out, whatever we want to do. Or I think the quickest way is just to say approved. And then from there, the editors can just see this clip is marked green. Let's work with that one first. So that's a little glimpse into the Golden State Warriors camera to cloud workflow. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. That is amazing, Tom. Thank you for sharing that with us. I have to ask, I mean, there's a lot in there. So thank you for putting that together. But how much time and how many headaches has this new process saved for you and your team? You know, I was thinking about this earlier when I mentioned the bubble. Um, at the time, we were only allowed to have two people from the content side that were allowed. And I guess I should have prefaced that earlier. Um, so we traveled with the team all year. We did COVID tests every day for 250 straight days. It was it was awful. But um, I wish I had this then. I wish that technology was available um, a little bit earlier because I think, Kara, you mentioned, like, you used to be able to, when no one was in the arena, you could just, like, transfer your card really quick, cut from that, and send it over Wi-Fi because nobody else is in the arena. But sometimes we'd have to run back a house just to cut something so that our social media team can have that just to kind of give their feed a little bit of a variety so it wasn't just you know tv broadcast angle tv broadcast angle maybe a photo here and there and you end up missing game action so um this has been awesome it's so much easier all i need to really check on is to make sure the files upload and then know that our editors are taking care of everything else that's amazing. and i forgot i threw the star wipe in there sorry hey we got to talk star about wipes. Star. yeah 
Team Starwipe here. I mean, hey, we're going to get into a deep dive with Premiere Pro, Premier Pro and transitions and all of that. But I am Team Starwipe. Maybe a heart wipe is nice, Same. too. That was a nice touch there. <laughs>